Good evening. I'm Jim Falk, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm the executive, the interim executive director of the Santa Fe Council on International Relations, and I'm so pleased that you could join us for what I know will be a really interesting conversation with a good friend, Kathy Martin, of course, the author of The Chancellor. Tonight is presented in partnership with the Phoenix Council on Foreign Relations, and I'm also very happy that three of the sister organizations in the World Affairs Council Network have joined us, the World Affairs Council of Jacksonville, the World Affairs Council of Western Michigan, and the World Affairs Council of Connecticut. So with that, let's just go to the subject at hand, the Chancellor. Tina, would you please introduce Kathy Martin? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Jim. What a great opportunity and partnership. To think that we can bring councils from all over the country together on Zoom is something I won't ever take for granted. My name is Tina Waddington. I'm the executive director of the Phoenix Committee on Foreign Relations. And we're like CFCIR and like the, count, the World Affairs Councils. We're Arizona's chapter, um, the premier foreign affairs organization here. It's my privilege and honor to introduce author of the chancellor, Kati Martin. Kati was born in Hungary. She has combined a career as a reporter and writer with human rights adv advocacy, serving on incredible missions, including at the United Nations, Human Rights Watch, International Women's Health Coalition, Committee to Protect Journalists, New America, Central European University, and International Rescue Committee, which is an organization I hold dear and to my heart, having immigrated as a refugee from Kosovo through the IRC just 20 years ago. Mm. Ati has published books and has contributed as a reporter to some of the highest regarded publications in the world, including The New Yorker and Atlantic Monthly. I named those two because I read those the most. Her books are critically acclaimed. Her memoir, Enemies of the People, My Family's Journey to America, was named a finalist for the National Book Critics Circle and will soon be a major motion picture. Kati, I don't know where the casting is for the movie, but I have some ideas on who should play you. I don't want to take any more time away from Kati, and I encourage you all to read her full bio as it's incredible. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you, Tina. What a wonderful introduction. I just, I didn't want you to stop. <laughs> I mean, couldn't you just go on for a few more minutes? My ego needed a real shot tonight. And uh, thank you, you have provided it. And, and let me just say, uh, Tina and Jim, what a privilege and an honor it is for me to be with you. And I only wish that we were there in person. It's a very, it's a gloomy, foggy night in, in New York, and I'd far rather be um, in, in Santa Fe. But, um, but this is, you know, as, as, as fatigued as we are with, with Zoom, this, this one has given me such a jolt of energy because you, you bring together such a remarkable group that um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to, to um, engage in a conversation with, uh, obviously with, with Jim, but uh, oh, there I am with the chat. There you are. <laughs> so, you know, one of the good things about Zoom is that we actually have, I guess, about four uh, cities that are linked, um, but let's get started. Mm -hmm. So I love this picture because oh. both of you are clearly having such a good time but as you point out in the book, Angela Merkel was unbelievably private. And we'll talk about that in some detail, but how in the heck, I know you're a great journalist, but how in the heck did you get her to agree to talk with you and to let some of her friends also share their thoughts about her? Well, uh, she is the, um, the, the planet's most private public figure bar none. And she didn't want this or any other book written about her. That is uh, a book that that goes um, be below the surface of, of her uh, um, 16 astonishing years as chancellor of the most powerful country in Europe. I mean, just you know, think about that uh, um, in 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 this age when when uh, of, of of ever shrinking attention spans that that a woman was four times elected. Chancellor of Germany, a country that never even had a queen, unique in Europe not to have had a queen. So, um, so she is, uh, she is a, 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 she has now entered as of uh, just days ago, she's now entered history because she's, uh, she's leaving the chancellery and is no longer a politician, but a historic figure that I think has so many lessons for all of us. 
and and I I I really would urge um, anybody interested in power, how to gain power, how to hold on to power, uh, to read this book, which is which is in some ways sort of a manual on uh, on 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 the uses of of power, and and how this triple outsider. So she's from the East, she's an East German, she is a scientist, um, and she's a woman in a, who, who crashed a, uh, an, an entirely male political culture, the, which is the German political uh, okay. scene. Before so we get to all that, it? tell me about how you approached her on the book. Okay. And, well, what did, and, and was she perhaps attracted by your own background, Kati? that she think, saw some similarity? I think if I had an edge, and it's not, this is by no means an authorized biography. Um, no, she, she simply doesn't give sit down interviews where she you know, uh, 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 opens up and talks about um, herself and her motivations. That is just not her style. Um, she, she had a, a, um, an authorized biographer, a German um, uh, journalist whom I befriended, who has given up because she wouldn't sit down with him. So she never sat down with me to uh, bear her soul, but what she allowed was much more useful and important. She allowed me to observe her at work and she didn't prevent me from, from uh, penetrating her very small inner circle. So I, I have found, speaking of, of, of the elder President Bush, as we just were, um, uh, I, I, uh, I wrote a book about presidential marriages called Hidden Power, and I, where I interviewed all the former presidents, including uh, George and Barbara Bush, and and all the other surviving presidents. This was uh, a decade and a half ago. And I discovered that you don't really get very much from the principles. You get far more from their inner circle because the principles, the, be it the chancellor of Germany or, or the uh, president of the United States, they are talking to history. They're not interested in making, in advancing my cause. You know, making news there, so they they tell these well polished stories, whereas, uh, which reflect well on them. Whereas, if you gain the confidence of their those who were there um, while they perform their their jobs, that's when you get interesting material. And I was I was able to befriend a couple of um, of, of Merkel's inner circle and ta interviewed people at every stage of her astonishing life. So starting with her, her uh, Russian language teacher in, in high school, um, she was a, a Russian uh, Merkel, um, and this is, this is relevant when we get to um, speaking about her relationship to Putin, uh, because Merkel is the only head of state that Putin actually has a regular conversation with and is the only one that Putin respects. And that's partly because she speaks fluent Russian. Well, let's come back to that in a second. I want you to talk about just her raw intelligence. I think hmm. one of her colleagues said that she had a few extra wires. Yes. And, and did she really have a photographic memory? Or does she, she does have, have a photographic, photographic memory. memory? Yes, I'll, I'll just give you a, a, a small example. I, my, my one and only meal with with uh, with with Chancellor Merkel was in um, in uh, uh, on the eve of 9/11 when uh, my my late husband Richard Holbrook had recently negotiated the end of, to the war in uh, in Bosnia and Merkel typically because she's always trying to learn from people who are good at whatever they do she asked to meet with Richard and and so we had we had this uh, this dinner. Um, where um, where I was able to observe her, but didn't learn very much at this dinner because the fourth person at this dinner, arranged by a very close friend of, of the chancellor's, a um, prominent German uh, film director, was Susan Sontag, who never drew breath. And as a result, um, not, you know, Richard didn't get a chance to talk about his diplomacy and, and Merkel 
didn't get a word in either. But it was interesting to observe that between the woman of letters, Susan Sontag, and the politician, it was the woman of letters who, who dominated the table. And Merkel typically, and I've learned this now, I've been working uh, on, I've been trying to decode her for five years now, uh, and I know this about her, that, that she is, she's an observer. She is, she, she quietly um, susses out um, what, what makes the person across the table tick. And okay, so flash forward um, from uh, uh, 9, 10, the date of our dinner to when I start working on this book five years ago, many years, and she remembered that dinner. And I mean, she must have had hundreds of thousands of dinners between the two, between those two events. And she said, yes, you know, um, your husband and I were off to a rocky start. <laughs> and I remembered that at this dinner, Richard said to her, in those days, uh, Merkel was, was a minister for youth and women. And Richard typically uh, teased her, said, uh, you know, uh, Angela, why? women and youth, you're not interested in either of those subjects. What's this about? And she didn't like that, uh, of course. And she, so that was the rocky start they were off. But then, then, then she quickly added, we were off to a rocky start, but I grew very fond of him. So um, well, the other thing about your dinner, and, and you mentioned this often in the book, she really doesn't want to spend a lot of time with politicians. She She'd much rather spend time with people who are specialists and experts in other fields or musicians. Good at good at something. She likes she likes uh, creative people. She um, actors, musicians, uh, cinematographers. She thinks politicians are endlessly repeating themselves, which they are. Which they but, are. <laughs> so yeah. one of the things that I realized too in reading the book was just. When you start thinking about other politicians, especially in this country, you know all about their father and their brothers and what yeah. schools they did and what they did right, what they did wrong, who's the black sheep in the family. But her early life could have turned out so differently if her father had not accepted the call. Yes, and her father, a man of the cloth, uh, a Lutheran pastor who had a tremendous influence on, on his daughter. Um, there he is, uh, an austere and, and hard to please man who never really um, fully approved of, of his brilliant daughter. Um, he was more um, inclined towards socialism than, uh, than she was. She chose the, the conservative Christian Democratic Party, which he uh, was not in favor of. But he did teach her critical thinking he, and, and embedded in her her core morality, which, which of course is there, there are two, I, I, I write in the chancellor about the two, two major influences on who she is and, and on her journey. And, and one is that, is that she is the product of this, this Lutheran um, upbringing where service um, was, was um, uh, uh, embedded in her, per, in her early so, on. So how old was and, she when they moved to East Germany? And then the other one was, as you say, um, the fact that she spent her first 35 years in a police state um, and, and never, you, you never get over that. I was a little kid when, when, uh, when my parents liberated me from a similar police state, namely Hungary, but she was 35. And so it was, it was um, at that age um, that, that she really began uh, her, her, her second life, which was, um, and, and you can see her in this, in this picture, she's in the middle row. Uh, and this is a school picture from, uh, you know, very much uh, characteristic of an East German school, um, you know, rather drab <laughs> uh, East German um, uh, so. school setting. Um, but but what she what she took away from those thirty five years was a, a, an absolute uh, distrust of of people because um, because there were more informers in in the in the so called democratic uh, people's republic of East Germany which was none of the above than than in in the Third Reich um, 
And um, so she, she um, this, this lack of trust, this innate suspicion um, has served her well in politics because um, she not, again, this is hard for Americans to, to comprehend, but in, in her 16 years as chancellor, there has not been a single tell-all book that has emerged from, from uh, her, her, uh, her staff, not a, not a breath of scandal. When Barack Obama went to say goodbye to her as he was leaving the White House in 2016, because they, they ultimately forged a, a, a pretty, pretty close working relationship, although uh, hopefully we'll get to that, although yeah. not without issues. Um, but, uh, and he looked around uh, um, the, her office. Um, oh, there she is uh, at, the, at the White House, a, a different scene. Um, but um, the, the, the anecdote I'm telling is, is in, the, in the chancellery in Berlin. And, she, and Obama looked around the office and, and said, you guys still all here? Eight years, eight years from the from when he first met those. So same team, and you know none of the none of the revolving door that we have in in uh, in our presidency. They, you know, she has the most loyal team, been with her for for twenty years, which I think speaks to a person's character. If you're able to keep a staff that long with with the kind of of hours that that uh, that she maintains um, is is uh, remarkable. Let, let's talk for a minute then about, and, and I'm j jumping around a bit here, but it'll link together. Hmm. You, you, in the book, you give an example, and I'm forgetting the name of the student or professor who really was an informer um, reporting oh, back to Stasi uh, about yeah. her. And, yeah. and, and, and that's one of the reasons um, that she and President Obama had a very rocky relationship at one point. And when you read how you've interpreted her anger and uh, experience with that yeah. type of surveillance, you really understand how the United States really blew it big time by monitoring her cell phone. Yes, she considered that a, a real real betrayal that uh, as, as, as um, uh, the others in our in our uh, call might might recall that that um, Snow the Snowden um, uh, intelligence dump uh, revealed that uh, that that the Obama administration had been tapping her her private cell phone. Not that they got anything because she's way too smart to ever say anything other than uh, where's dinner into her cell phone. But still. It was a betrayal, and and um, and the American ambassador of the day, John Emerson, told me that it was a wasted year between between Washington and Berlin while, while this this chill set in between them. But you know, she's a very she's an absolutely cool customer, very pragmatic, and and gets on with the doesn't doesn't hold uh, grudges. Um, I I um, consider her. Her, her politics to be the, 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 the uh, politics of no ego because she really has mastered the art of parking her ego and just getting on with uh, the job at hand. And she considers it a job, not, not an identity, which means that, um, that, that she will not, it will not be traumatic for her to leave the chancellery after 16 years at the pinnacle of power because she never really wrapped herself in the in the cloak of power, if you will. You know, it's impossible to imagine her, uh, you know, accumulating wealth or being on the the, the deck of a yacht That's, that blows the mind to even think, or you know, living in a palatial residence. She never left her. No, her tell people apartment. where she lives and yeah. how simple her motorcade is compared to motorcades we see in Washington. Right. Yeah, again, again, Jim, we, you know, our politicians could, I mean, all of us uh, could learn so much from, um, from her example of, uh, she considers um, possessions and, and wealth to be an encumbrance. Um, and, and, uh, and, you know, I, I, I mentioned already that not a, there hasn't been a breath of scandal in 16 years. Well, partly because she's incorruptible. 
because her idea of a good time is 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 a hike in in the Brandenburg woods and her uh, and 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 cooking her uh, potato soup, which by the way is not that great, but. I've been well, I, know she, I know she loves the Western United States, so maybe she'll come hike with us in Phoenix or Santa Fe. We have I a question. Love that. I bet she would. We have a question from one of our viewers in Dallas, Texas, Ray Termini, and it's on this line of thought. Could Chancellor Merkel be a role model for U.S. politicians? And if so, how could we ever make it work? Uh, if only. Uh, you know, she is, I mean, this book isn't a Valentine to her. I, 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 I deal with her blind spots. Yeah. Um, We're going to talk about I, those in a minute. Yeah. But, but, uh, but in terms of the um, simplicity of her style and her incorruptibility and the, and this, you know, as far as Merkel is concerned, hubris is a male uh, weakness. She doesn't, she doesn't have time for, for, for hubris. You know, she she had the misfortune of dealing with 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 a handful of of, of uh, demagogues on her watch. So you know, notably uh, Donald Trump, her her most challenging um, fellow head of state, uh, and I'm sure we'll get a few few anecdotes in about her relationship to, to, to Trump, which was I, I I can't resist. I mean, we'll talk about it again, but there it yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, see, see that picture. I love that picture because it really shows. Look at look at all the men around her, all the all the fellow uh, world leaders, and and they're obviously letting Angela Merkel uh, uh, carry the ball for them. And and there's there's Trump with his jutting jaw and his his folded arms, and and he did everything in his power to shake herself assurance and he never succeeded because she simply Merkel does not take the bait yeah. because she has observed she's always been the only woman in the room you know starting uh, when she was a physicist only only woman in the lab she really has decoded a, a male uh, the whole macho male thing and so Trump um, was just another peacock, um, and 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 she just she, she was he tried everything you know famously he tossed he fi he fished out a couple of candies it's from finished. his pocket and tossed oh. them at her at, uh, at 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 a summit and everybody else um, uh, around the table you know uh, Justin Trudeau Macron all the others were horrified at. You know that uh, he he tossed these these old starbursts, probably covered in lint, uh, at her and said, "Don't say I never gave you anything, Angela." And it was as if she hadn't noticed. You know, which is the worst thing you can do to a bully is not react. And she practices the same self control with Putin, who tried every KGB trick. Yeah, I want to come her. back to that in a second. You know, when you talk about politicians. Kathy, you think about their rhetoric, their flowing ability to be orators. The word, she was not comfortable in really giving speeches, was she? No, that is not among her, 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 her great gifts. She's a very boring speaker and, and, uh, and, and knows it. And uh, her Isn't most- that because the audience expected that? Because you talk about how at Harvard and some other places, she sort of let down her guard. Yeah, she's more emotive in this country, and she certainly. When uh, I hope eventually we'll get to to her handling of, of of the pandemic, because there she revealed more emotion than she ever had uh, previously. But um, she's suspicious of rhetoric, and because she's so familiar with with Germany's darkest history, and uh, and you know just doesn't doesn't think that that um, that crowds should be inflamed by skilled demagogues and uh, and because because Germans uh, have also learned the hard way um, that they're in you know that that following a, a, a fire breathing uh, autocrat uh, notably Hitler um, got them in real real trouble so I'm not sure that her style of dry rhetoric would 
would uh, would work well in our country. I don't I don't think it I don't think it would. We we seem to need more. Uh, you know, we're looking for an entertainer in chief. We're mm -hmm. we're looking for for more charisma uh, at our at our peril. But um, um, she 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 had the advantage of having a country that that uh, was looking for someone who was not self-absorbed. Her focus was never on herself. Her focus was always on her people and that they really appreciated. Let me remind everyone that if you'd like to ask a question, please don't put it in the chat box, but put it in the Q&A section and that way I'll be able to see it. She truly had a meteoric rise. Um, and I wonder if you might touch on that and I'm gonna pop up uh, a picture of, of truly one of her mentors. And she really was able to draw on a lot of very intelligent, highly qualified men who took her un under their wing. Yes, she not only um, did she, and there, there's her, her most important mentor, Helmut Kohl, the Titanic figure who, who really can be credited with the unification of East and West Germany. And there's the very young uh, Angela, who was the minister in his cabinet, the youngest minister and the only one from East Germany. And of course, the, the, the Greek tragedy of Kohl and Merkel is that she ended his, his uh, political life um, when he was caught in a, um, in a kickback scandal and and because he was such a uh, a, a lion uh, 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 among politicians, no one else in the uh, CDU, the Christian Democratic Union, which is his party and hers, uh, had the courage to say to him, um, Helmut, um, you have to leave the stage now because uh, you're going to sink all of us. The party's going to go down with you. Merkel did. Merkel, the protege of this great figure, uh, wrote without any advance notice to, to her mentor, wrote a, um, a widely read um, opinion piece uh, in the Frankfurter Allgemeine um, Zeitung, in which she said, it's time for you to go. And that was just a breathtakingly bold and assertive move. And it was not the first or the last time that, that she would end the political career of, of, um, of her mentors when necessary. So she's not a sentimental person. Yet another, um, you know, she's broken so many of the, of the stereotypes attached to women. I mean, this toughness and the ability to um, to uh, d detach her 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 emotions from uh, from the necessary uh, hard call, and she so she ends Cole's political life, and thereby clears a passage for for her own uh, entry to the highest uh, highest office, and this. So how old was she? Uh, well, this was, she was uh, in her early 40s, but, you know, she had been in politics for, for less than, less than a decade then, and, um, and, and, you know, just leapfrogged ahead of, uh, of all, the, all the other men. It was, I cannot overemphasize what a male political culture Germany was and how well, How maybe this will help. <laughs> yeah, there, there it is. There, the, those are her predecessors in, in the chancellery. And, and the one that she succeeded, the, the one that's pictured next to her, Gerhard Schroeder, she also decimated. Um, again, um, uh, Schroeder, like Cole, underestimated her because she has such a kind of a bland uh, affect that um that that people tend to think that you know she can't she can't be too dangerous well she can be but the but but she does it not not uh for self promotion but because well partly it's self promotion but 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 it's it's really it's really out of conviction that uh that that um you know 
that that they've done something that that will that will destroy the larger the larger cause of the party and then the country. I wish we had an hour and a half, but we only have about another 25 minutes or so, and I'm getting some good questions. Okay. And you said, you know, that she was able to divorce the emotion from the hard political reality. And yet there was the situation, of course, uh, with, with, with the refugees. And there's this, you know, very powerful picture. Why don't you tell us what this picture is? And, oh, and gosh, yes. Yes, so I, this is my chapter called The Summer of Reem. And Reem is the weeping girl there. And, and that, this encounter really uh, changed history because um, this was at a town hall the summer of 2015. Um, the, the greatest humanitarian crisis since the Second World War was unfolding as thousands of refugees uh, poured into uh, Europe from from our our forever wars, and uh, and and Merkel, um, who was uh, in in kind of automatic pilot mode, and and you know was telling this this little girl, a Palestinian refugee, um, that well we can't take everybody. Um, you know we have a process. We have a you know blah blah blah. We we have we have rules here. And the girl started weeping and said, I, I, you know, all my, all my classmates are planning their future and I cannot because we, we, uh, we don't know what our future is. And, and Merkel at that point, just, uh, so, you know, so this triggered a deep emotion in her and her deep Lutheran uh, faith and, and the responsibility to, to, uh, to to protect those unable to protect themselves, and she whispers into her mic a single word, "God, God." And at that point, um, she turned a page on history. She announced that Germany would take all refugees, and one million, mostly Middle Eastern refugees, were allowed in and have been. And this is. Uh, this is a stunning achievement, have been integrated into German life. Um, and, and the German population has, for the most part, supported her with the exception, uh, the dangerous exception of a far right group, which is mostly, ironically, from her region of East Germany, that has had a much tougher time with this new uh, multi-ethnic, no longer homogeneous Germany that, that Merkel has wrought. And, and that's the AFD party, is that what it is? Yes, the Alternative for Deutschland now sits in the, in the Bundestag, in the German parliament. First time a far right party is in there since the Second World War. And that too is a, is a product of the Merkel era. But I have to say, it is not a growing movement. Uh, in fact, it's a shrinking movement. And like 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 mo most blowhards during during the pandemic, um, they've they've staked their their uh, uh, claim to be you know anti anti science, anti vaccination, and and so um, many many more casualties in in the east. Uh, fatalities from COVID than anywhere else, and and their their public support has has diminished. Nevertheless, it's um, it's a fact. Yeah, that, and, and um, let me bring in Ambassador Hartwick, uh, who says, "Would you address the impact on her psyche of the gradual but steady negative German reaction to welcoming the flood of refugees?" And yet, you would say that overall the reaction was favorable. Is that right? Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, and continues to be. It's a back burner issue. Um, it's 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 not something that that um, that's at the forefront um, uh, of, uh, of of German life any longer. There's um, the, she 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 after this this uh, generous offer uh, of um, of opening our our Germany's uh, gates to to the the. Uh, Middle Eastern refugees. She, of course, uh, initiated a system of processing and 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 um, retrain work retraining and and schools were. I mean, you know, the Germans uh, have a deserved reputation for efficiency, 
and and not a single um, refugee ever slept on a park bench in Germany. That's that's I get that from their Minister of the Interior. So um, it is a, it is a stunning stunning success, and now a template for other countries who hopefully will. Um, will will follow uh, her example because this this is you know this the, now we're going to have the climate refugees uh heading our way it's this is this is not um a solved but, uh, but let me right. ask you this in in yeah. hindsight should she have perhaps collaborated coordinated more with uh yes. the other eu countries i mean isn't yes. that one of her shortcomings yes here she um she was motivated more by emotion than she normally would be. Uh, and I explained that in, in some detail why that is so. Uh, but then she rapidly course corrected and she was astonished at how little support her fellow EU members uh, provided. Uh, Sweden was good, Austria for a while. And then of course came the demagogues like, like Viktor Orban in Hungary, uh, who, um, who who um, you know unschooled barbed wire and and treated and and to keep out the the, the refugees and and and, um, and 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 Erdogan and all all the other demagogues. Uh, she ultimately made a deal with Erdogan, the Turkish um, uh, uh, president, to to take to take back the the next flood. So you know she she um, she tempered some of her uh, initial uh, almost boundless uh, generosity. But, but you know, she, she showed the world that it can work if we roll up our sleeves. I, I don't, I, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time in Germany in the last four or five years. In fact, I was there last week. And I don't know anybody in, in, uh, in Berlin where I mostly uh, stay that isn't in some way or wasn't in some way involved with helping refugees. And I think Germans have really enjoyed being on the right side of history for a change. They, they're true. very proud of their, their own uh, role in, in all this. And, and you know, the, the fact is that, that not only is, Ger is Germany the European economic and financial center, but it's now the moral center of Europe too, which is an astonishing well, what they've done, and, and and also the Canadians, they're they're good examples for for us in our own country. Let Indeed. me bring in Suresh Chandra. Interesting question: Did the overall German population, overall German population, fully ex accept Merkel, who was born and raised in East Germany, and reality appeared on the German political landscape after the re reunification? Did they, well, they, you know, she was reelected for 16 years, four, four elections. So yes, Germany, is, it's a democracy. She was democratically elected. And there, there is the night that began her second, her Where second Where was she that night? She was, uh, it was Thursday and it was sauna night. She's a creature of habit. <laughs> and even though the tectonic plates of history were shifting beneath her, she went to the sauna and with her towel under her arm, she, after the sauna proceeded, didn't go to the pub as she usually did after, uh, but went to that place that you just showed on the screen where the wall uh, was breached and crossed uh, for the first time from East Berlin to West Berlin. And, and uh, but was at her desk the next morning in the laboratory, or not her desk, in, uh, uh, whatever one. Right, lab in her laboratory. In um, so she's not one to get carried away, um, but that was uh, that was the beginning of her reinvention of herself. She had chosen science um, as a kind of a safe place to park her 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 brain during during the um, the communist period because science is a little bit. Uh, a little bit more immune from the from the uh, manipulation of the secret police than than uh, she was able to travel because of that only in the east only, only in, the, in east. the east she never 
um, she she was only once in in uh, in her hometown of Hamburg, and she got special permission to go to a, a, the wedding of a of a of a cousin, but that was it. No, no, she she the West was a foreign country for her, and I I posit in the book that that really she identified with refugees partly because she felt like she herself was a refugee because although she didn't have to leave her country, I mean, East and West Germany unified, but her country disappeared under her. And so she had to, I mean, the East German state was just almost overnight um, collapsed. It was a dysfunctional state. So she had to relearn everything. And and this was this was um, the the astonishment that that she could that she learned so fast and so few other East Germans were as quick off the mark as as she was and she's resented for that reason by by many East Germans to answer the prior very good questions so East Germans funnily enough are are um, uh, are not as enamored of her as um, You'd think that they'd be they'd be full of pride for for that one of their own achieve what she has achieved become the leader of the West the most powerful um, uh, politician in in Europe but uh, but there's a lot of resentment of her too particularly among the older generation. Well, a sticking point, and I'm going to show up this picture in a minute of uh, another tough person that she had to deal with who was as dramatically shaped by the fall of the Berlin Wall and the, and the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and that is Vladimir Putin. And when you look, read about some of the areas where Merkel has been criticized as perhaps not being as successful, it's certainly with the relations with Russia, and particularly the, the, the pipeline, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So let's talk about how she and Putin were able to, to establish I would say from your book, a, a, a relationship of uh, mutual respect, but yes. <laughs> great caution. Uh, yeah, okay, so so this, this was one of their early meetings where Putin, like, like Trump, was trying to shake her. And he did, the, he, he was aware that she'd been bitten by a dog in childhood twice, and he unleashed his dog. And uh, Coney, who there you see uh, sniffing Merkel, who just froze. This was this was an act of such such you know KGB brutality, uh, but he was testing her, and um, and ultimately grew to have enormous respect for her. We are we are now on the on the brink of yet another potential war in in Ukraine um, in 2014 uh, when when Putin invaded. Um, uh, Ukraine and occupied uh, Crimea, um, President Obama basically handed off the leadership of the West to Merkel, who became, because uh, oh, Obama had no patience for Putin. He, 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 he said to Merkel, she, he just lies to me all the time. And, and Merkel said, well, that makes two of us. Um, but, but, uh, but, she she didn't have the luxury of choice. Uh, Ukraine is a whole lot closer to Germany than it is to the U.S., and uh, and also she understood that that um, that she she had a um, a better relationship with Putin than than Obama, who had been very dismissive of him and called him a, a you know a re called Russia a regional power, which really irked uh, Putin. But at any rate, she her negotiation to 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 halt. Putin's aggression um, in Ukraine is epic. It's this, it's it, it, it that will be uh, uh, studied by by uh, not only diplomats but negotiators of all sorts for for the ages, because she stayed at the table negotiating the 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 terms of the so-called Minsk Accord, which which have held. It's a it's a uh, it's not a full piece, but it but it halted the aggression. And then she stayed at that table for days on end. She, she, uh, I quote her saying that the only way she knew the time of day was whether bread and jam were being served or a roast. So, you know, this focus that she, that she brought to the table, this, this granular uh, mastery of facts, she said she knew every tree in the Donbass. 
the region that uh, where the Russian militia were, and um, and so 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 Putin couldn't BS her because she came into those those talks with you know maps under her arm and <laughs> and able to able to counter every um, every BS um, excuse that he would give. These are not my people. They're not wearing my uniform. Whatever, whatever. She just um, and not only did she did she uh, negotiate a ceasefire, but then even tougher was to get the um, the uh, her Western partners, including the U.S., um, to impose sanctions on Russia, which have held to this day, and on Putin's buddies. But, but let me go back and bring in somebody you know, and that's Maria Zamet from Virginia Beach. Hello. And, and Maria, is, the way she phrases the question, let me let me read it. Do you think a shortcoming was being too accommodating in Russia and Putin, sacrificing security interests for economic ones, particularly mm. Germany's need for natural gas? And I'll just go a, a little bit beyond Maria's question because she's also been criticized for her relations with other authoritarians, whether it be uh, Erdogan or Viktor Orban. Or, or Xi Jinping. She's or made Xi more, Jinping. Merkel has made more trips to China than any other head of state. She identified China as the as the looming uh, threat uh, as early as uh, oh there there's that's a great picture that's a great picture <laughs> like what yeah, the heck like, are you what, saying what the <laughs> yes <laughs> are you out of your mind um, so um, she uh, is a realist. I would say she's not a Kissingerian real politician, but nor does she believe that the arc of the moral universe bends toward justice. Um, she is, I would, I would define Merkel as a determined optimist. And on, on um, the deal with Russia, the Nord Stream deal, which is highly controversial, um, she put German interests ahead of uh, European interests. And it can be argued that um, that you know there, thereby she has left Germany open to to Russian uh, blackmail manipulation, but um, Russia has never yet um, used those those tricks against Germany. Ger the, I, for whatever reason, it would take too long. I explain it in my book, but um, they. Um, the, but the Nord Stream deal is is uh, is one that I question as as being overly cynical, overly pragmatic, and and privileging German interests over over um, uh, over those of the the, the rest of the um, allies, and so and so with China as well. She pushed through in her last as her last big diplomatic. Uh, Roll of the dice. Um, uh, just recently, she pushed. She pushed through a trade deal. Uh, she and Macron with China, that levels somewhat the the playing field between China and the and uh, and 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 the European Union. Despite the fact that that Trump had already been defeated and Biden was in the White House, and the Biden administration asked her not to make that deal you know, let us do it together, Washington, Berlin, Paris, et cetera, a, a united front. But by, by, by the end of her term, she who reveres the United States, um, she considers uh, the United States responsible for not only Germany's second chance, but her own. Um, she was very disturbed, A, obviously by the election of Trump. Mm -hmm. And even after, um, his his defeat, uh, the fact that Trumpism uh, hasn't vanished, and she, who is such a student of history and knows the power of a big lie, I mean Hitler uh, came to power, touting the big lie that that Germany was stabbed in the back by the communists and the Jews, and so she's very worried about the power of, of Trump's big lie of this. And you were with election. her just a few days ago, weren't you? Yes. Yes, I was I was uh, in Berlin uh, um, on my uh, um, book tour and uh, and 
um, and saw her in the chancery and presented her with with my book. I can't I can't say whether she's read it. I I or whether she will she will like it. I didn't write it to please her. I think she will. Quite honestly, I think she will find it too personal because um, I mean, not that I uncover scandals, but but I do attempt. This is very much a human portrait, and that's very much what she doesn't want. Uh, she doesn't think it's my or your business what she does outside the chancellor. And to me, that's what makes it interesting. That's what you know. Her. Well, her well, I think you understated something uh, when we started our conversation. You said that her father was not supportive of her politics. Neither parent, mother, nor father, voted for. Is that right? Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, and, and neither one ever gave an interview about her, nor her siblings, nor her husband. We haven't mentioned her husband, who's known as, as the scientist, the sci who, who's known as the Phantom of the Opera for two reasons because he's an opera lover and, and uh, more, more obviously because he is a phantom. He has never given an interview about his wife, and he, he says, I'm of no interest to anybody. Well, you know, let us decide that. Um, anyway, you want to show a picture of the mother there? That's the mother okay. and the father standing. Right. The, mother, the mother died um, quite recently. I, I interviewed the president of Harvard University um, on the subject of, of, her, of, of Merkel's recent grief for after, his, after her mother's uh, death. Uh, she was she was uh, she was at Harvard to give a commencement speech and and spoke more freely of the loss uh, at Harvard than she does at home. Um, I mean, she's so she 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 is so depersonalizes um, things in her own country. But but um, uh, her her uh, lately. Uh, she maybe this is a function of age. She's she's she started to speak rather more warmly and nostalgically about her East German heritage, and uh, you know maybe a little bit late to to you know uh, win back um, those East Germans who who don't think that that she did enough for them. Um, but she always insisted that she would be chancellor of all Germans. She, the women don't think she did enough for them because she never gave a single speech about women's rights. She thought that that her her the best thing she could do for women was by example, and by surrounding herself with other powerful women. Her her inner circle, um, two thirds of which are women, um, is is you know a remarkable. Uh, transformation of German Germany. We have just a few more minutes, and yeah. I, I'd like you to talk very briefly about the role of the chancellor, because you really have to be someone who can build consensus, and she was remarkable at doing that, and yeah. how, in a sense, uh, we talk about the power that the President of the United States has, and we've certainly seen it with COVID, about how governors can overrule the president. Uh, the chancellor is dealing with a number of, of states as well. 16 lender, 16 states. It is a uh, power um, in, uh, is, is very diffuse by deliberately so. And it, it is we, the, the United States, who um, helped to craft the German constitution, you know, uh, in, in the wake of, of the Second World War. And we didn't want a strong executive um, in, in uh, the Reichstag. <laughs> Um, so she, uh, the influence that, that she wields has been much more uh, pronounced in foreign, in foreign policy than, than internally. She's far more interested in, in foreign policy. The one area where she hasn't, um, to her regret, delivered, and she was going to do that in her last two years and there, but for COVID, she would have, is climate. And um, which is something that she feels very, very strongly about. And she announced that would be her final thing. And then, then uh, events intervene. But, and I, I predict that we will be seeing um, after, after a well-deserved uh, rest, 
I think we will be seeing um, Merkel on the world stage and most likely um, in two areas. One, uh, climate, her unfinished agenda on climate um, and, uh, and women's empowerment. Hmm. And maybe migration and immigration as well. Perhaps. Well, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, she's a symbol of of that. So uh, it, it, I, I think a, she will she will she she will not disappear. I think she will be for Germany what 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 Charles de Gaulle was was for France, in or out of office, just the symbol of the country, and you know the qualities that we associate with Merkel: the moderation, the the um, tolerance, the the um, the openness to the new and and the and the uh, science and evidence-based um, uh, rule uh, are, are all things your, we associate with Germany now. Let me get your comment on this. This is a insightful, terrifying thought. Is there a sense, this is from Virginia McCollum, who uh, coordinates our book club here in Santa Fe. Is there a sense that Russia has waited for Merkel to leave politics before seriously threatening Ukraine? You know, I, I, it's so interesting because I've been thinking along those lines too. That you know the week that she that she gets her farewell um, military uh, send off, uh, uh, Putin uh, marshals his forces. Uh, so it is a it is a test. It's a test of of the Biden administration, and a test of Germany. And um, and you know let us let us pray that they follow Merkel's uh, example of dogged diplomacy. And um, and not um, matching arms with arms, bombast with bombast. I mean, she she really um, that is that is that is her legacy. Is uh, keep talking even if it's an inch, even if it's for an inch of of progress. Her her role, her kind of role model is Sisyphus. She for her Sisyphus pushing that rock up the mountain. Uh, only to have it fall back is not a negative image. She she considers that what she does. Well, uh, what can you tell us in 30 seconds about the new chancellor, Olaf Scholz? Is, will we see a continuation? And take a minute. <laughs> 30 seconds is not enough time for that. 30 seconds. I, uh, I, I don't think we're, we'll see much change. He ran um, on, a, on a kind of a, a Merkel ticket. Uh, even started adapting her her signature hand gesture. Uh, he's a social democrat, and she's a Christian democrat. But but uh, Merkel has uh, is, is a post party politician. She she took from anything that worked. She she uh, she she would run with, and and um, and her successor um, will will follow her lead. I mean. I mean, what more successful role model uh, for a chancellor than what uh, what Merkel has pulled off? But but uh, he can't match her her personal journey. No one can. Uh, it's such an astonishing. Oh, this will not be the last picture we see of her. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so this is during COVID, after she roused the nation and um, and said, "Please take." please take it seriously. And they did take it seriously because it came from her and because she never lied to them. Um, okay. and, but she was seen, she's always done her own grocery shopping. And here she Amazing. is uh, uh, with as many rolls of toilet paper as bottles of wine in the cart. Well, Kati, it is a pleasure to see you again. Um, for Thank those you of you who don't know, Kati came to Dallas a few years ago and we had a, a great time. Um, congratulations on this book. You know, I gave a copy of it uh, to a, a young woman for her bat mitzvah. She's very oh. interested in Germany and a young, you know, she's uh, what, 13, 14 years old. And yeah. it just seemed like the perfect gift. And as we celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas, I hope that all of you will consider this. This is a delightful book to read, so well written, uh, but also you'll learn a tremendous amount uh, about a woman who was really quite mysterious, kept her private life very, very much in the background. Thanks Mysteri again, Patrick, for being Mysterious no more. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us. And I hope you'll be with us tomorrow when I talk with Tom Standage with The Economist on a Wednesday uh, with Gene Becker, George Bush's chief of staff. And you can find out information about those programs by going to our respective websites. Good night, everyone. Thanks again for being here.
Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everybody.